Okay, this is uh, the wiring for the ICOM IC9700 and the ICOM IC7300 crossband repeat. Um, the 9700 won't do crossband repeat natively, so you have to use an external radio. In this case, we're using a HF or 6 meter <coughs> radio as a crossband, and in the demo, I'll show you how you can use others. But uh, this is very easy. You only need uh, it's all done externally, no internal modifications. Uh, it's all done through a crossover cable. So uh, you'll need a 13-pin uh, DIN plug on the HF or the 7300 side, and then a 8-pin uh, DIN plug on the 9700 side. Most of the HF radios come with that 13-pin, so your 7300 should have came with one in the accessory bag. You can use that one, and then you'll have to obtain one for the uh, 9700. Uh, when you see the upcoming demo, uh, you'll see I'm not using a straight through cable uh, from 13 to 8. I've got uh, some pigtails in there that convert both of these into the uh, standard 9600 baud port, but it's exactly the same. It uh, Don't be confused by that. It's The wires that are crossed over are exactly the same. It's just through a, a standard 9600 baud style port that's been around for many years that I like to use. Uh, this will, on the 9700 side, this will work uh, on VHF, UHF, and 1.2. It will do digital analog, analog to digital via digital voice or D-Star. So, I think that's all I can tell you about that. So let's just, let me show you how these things are crossed over real quick. We'll put the 7300 on one side, the 9700 on one, the other. And we'll just walk down the different pins we'll need. So we're going to need, on the 7300 side, we're going to need number pin number two. That's our ground here. We're going to need pin number three. That's our send, a.k.a. push to talk. We can drop all the way down here. We're going to need pin 11, audio input. Pin 12, audio output. And pin 13 is going to be our COS line, or AKA uh, Squelch S by ICOM. But same thing. All right, let's cross them over. Uh, for the ground line, we're going to go ground to ground. So that they're both happen to be pin two. So pin two to pin two. Uh, pin three is our push to talk on the 7300. <coughs> we want that to go to our cost line on the 9700 which is pin six, pin 11 is audio in. We want that to go to audio out on the 9700. That's gonna be pin five. And pin 12 is our audio out on the 7300, which we wanna to go to the audio in, pin four. And the last one is the COS signal from 7300 to the push to talk on the 9700, that's pin three. So that's it in a nutshell. Build you up a cable, 13 pin plug on this side, when, and then an eight pin plug on this side, and then cross them over, uh, just, just like it's in this little chart here. And that's it. So, I uh, don't know what else to say, good luck. Uh, in, the, in the upcoming video, I show uh, how to uh, cross over either one of these radios to an, to an external via UHF radio and that can apply to a lot of different radios but uh, I'm happy I happen to use a uh, oh, I use a couple of radios for satellites and they're ICOM ICF 121 and ICF 221 but uh, that's it Okay, let's get set up here. I got a lot to do here. This is a lot of setup to show, but uh, especially when I was working on something else. But here's our radios. We're gonna need a diplexer.
lot to hook up here. That's all right. Gotta find a power cable. Okay. Let me forget that. Now I'm going to be running all these radios through a dummy load. So nobody can complain. Oh, you're putting stuff on there. You're doing this, you're doing that. All right, that'll work. Okay, what do we got here? All right, I'm gonna reset these radios back to factory stock because that way everybody's on the same page. I'm gonna get rid of these microphones. We don't need those. All right, let's everybody get on the same page by resetting both of these radios back to stock. That will make it much easier. I'm not gonna run through this video and make a polish video, man. It is what, you, it, is what it is today. All right, let's see. All right, first thing we wanna do We want to reset them back to stock. Let's see, go to menu, set, uh, other, reset, all reset, next, yes. All right, that one's taken care of. We'll do the same over here. Make sure that you know what your reference adjust is when you start messing with these. This one was stock. And this one had been previously readjusted by me. So I know where it's supposed to be. It's 24.7 stock and it's supposed to be 26.3. All right, that takes care of that. Um, um, we're gonna do this demonstration with using FM. It's just easier. You can cross band from uh, FM to sideband or sideband to FM, however you want to do it. But you have to remember that, you know, the issues you run into with trying to squelch a sideband signal. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you've got the voice activated squelch or syllabic squelch, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, sideband uh, signals are hard to squelch. But I will say this, I haven't really tested on the 9700, but on the 7300, the squelch in this thing is razor sharp. Very good squelch circuit in these uh, 7300s. I don't know if that's an STR thing or an ICOM thing, but uh, they've really they've really stepped up the game in uh, the squelch circuits. But anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, let's go ahead and use uh, FM 10 meter FM simplex. So we'll go over here and we'll.
we'll go to 29.6. Again, we're all in the dummy load, so it does not matter where we go. That's that. We'll put it on FM. That looks good. I'm going to turn the attenuators on on both of these since we're so close to doing all this testing. No reason not to. Make sure that I don't forget. Oh, we're also going to turn down the power on all these. Again, there's no reason to run a bunch of power. We'll do it on 1.2 also. All right, that looks good. Good enough. Uh, down here, we're gonna turn the power down down here. All right, we're all on zero, but none of these radios put out zero. They all put out almost a watt when it's on zero. Six tenths, something like that. All right, uh, that looks good. Let's test it here. We're good there. We're good there, so. Let's just deal with a single band. Uh, we can turn this on just for grins. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I don't know what else I would change. I think that's a pretty good initial setting. Let's just, yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me plug these cables in here. This is our crossover cable, like I talked about earlier. Wherever that is. All right, so we have the one for the 7300. This is a 13 pin, and it terminates into a 9600 baud. And then I have the one for the 9700. The eight pin also terminates into a 9600 baud female. And then we have the magic of this whole thing, the crossover cable. 9600 baud male cable with the PTT and COS crossed over and the two audio lines in and out crossed over. So let me plug that in. Again, this, you don't have to do the 9600 baud thing. That's just how I'm on part. All right, let's get this thing in here. All right, they're plugged in. Let's go ahead and cross them over. Now remember that as soon as I plug in this, this crossover cable, these radios are hot. So you have to make sure that you're ready to go before you plug in this cable. In other words, let's say, for instance, uh, you had this up here on some uh, UHF repeater frequency and there's some guys talking. Well, as soon as you plug in that cable, it's gonna put it out on 10 meter simplex. And same thing, vice versa. A Couple of guys rag chewing on 10 meters, you're on the local repeater, as soon as you plug in that thing, it's gonna make this hot. And everything that's on here is gonna be retransmitted onto that repeater. So everybody's gonna get confused. So make sure you know what you're doing before you do it, you know. All right, it's basically that simple. Now you'll see, when I open the squelch here, it'll transmit down here. And when I open the squelch here, it'll transmit up here. And we'll turn the audio on just so I can show you that that does work. So watch what happens when I open the squelch here. So this squelch static is being rebroadcast down here. And that squelch static is being rebroadcast up there. Now there's really nothing else you need to do. There's a few other basic settings that, you, that I think would make it uh, a little better. One of them is probably more important than all the other ones. I'll show you what that is. Um, you're going to want to go into both radios. Let's start down here at the with the uh, 7300. Go into your menu, set, connectors. Uh, let's see. Uh, data off modulate. Data off uh, mod. That one 
is the when the data mode is turned off that's where it's getting its audio from you can see it says mic and accessory so in other words um, you've got two inputs at the same time which I think is kind of weird I don't know why you'd want to do that because if you have this thing in repeater mode and you break the squelch here it's gonna make this over here hot so if you have the microphone plugged in potentially you could feedback signal and you would get not only the radio the signal coming through the radio but also your own voice outside so I just go through and change this to accessory that way all the audio is coming out of the accessory port not out of the mic port and we can do the same the same thing up here set connectors oh, let's see I think it's mod input yeah data off mods it's the same here mic and accessory so you want to change that to accessory still going to do you the same thing it's just you know there's no chance of any audio feeding back through the microphones if they were plugged in they're not plugged in here so it wouldn't matter right uh let's see if you want to adjust the audio you can do that if you just leave it stock it seems to be pretty close but if you want to tighten up maybe one radio is louder than the other or vice versa uh you would come in here and do the same thing under connectors i believe and that would be yeah accessory af output a and then down here is where you adjust the af so you could adjust you know you could compensate for any differences in audio it's pretty close the way it is but uh, on both radios, same same thing. You can adjust this one likewise. Uh, let's see. That's man. That's it. I mean, there's that's just about as easy as it could uh, as it could be. Um, I don't really have a way of showing you because I don't have a 10 meter radio that has FM, unfortunately. Uh, what we could do is I've got my little my little satellite rig over there you can see it over here in this in this corner over here we can rig that up we can cross the uh, 9700 or we could do this well yeah we can cross the 9700 over to that one and then we can make a cross band uh, using that uh, the data port on this I'll show you how that works Make more sense so in other words we'll have this one on UHF the 9700 what's that better all right so we'll have the 9700 where it is on UHF and then we'll set this one to a VHF simplex frequency and we'll be able to cross band back and forth between the two using that same crossover cable so let's just go ahead and kill the radios uh, I haven't talked much about this FM satellite deal I got going on over here but uh, this is what I use for satellite work FM satellite work in fact I'd much rather use this for FM satellites than I would this it's much more uh, this crap all right so we got two radios over here The, uh, I was doing slow scan TV on the, the ISS. But anyway, we got two radios over here, um, VHF on top, UHF on the bottom, and that's what I use for satellite work. But today we're just going to concern ourselves with the top one because it's the VHF radio. And if we go over here to our banks, I have some simplex frequencies in it. There's APRS, some weather channels. Okay, there's a VHF net simplex, but I'm going to have to adjust the squelch because on satellites, we don't close the squelch. So that's why that's like that. What's going on? Okay, there we go. So now we're on 146.52 over here. And we'll wait till we plug it in to do that. And I also didn't explain, these two radios are both stubbed with 9600 baud ports and I've talked about this in the past so you can do packet that's what this is really designed for so I can do packet through the space station but uh, you can do packet through uh, the VHF side or the UHF side this will do 9600 baud packet that bottom radio will but uh, anyway so it's basically the same thing as plugging it in here it's just different radio so let's grab this 
So I'm going from the 9700. So I've got my, my male 9600 and I'm gonna plug it right into the female over here. All right, that's as simple as that. So now when we turn this one on, we should be good to go. And I've got two radios right here that we can use to test it. All right, so UHF, VHF, VHF, UHF. So. Let's talk from here to here, going through here, and we'll come back out on here, all right? So we've got this one on 156.52. I'll put this on low power, by the way. All right, it's on low power. So it's two and a half watts out of here, and of course, almost nothing into a dummy load here. Oh, shoot, I'll have a dummy load on that one. Stand by. Best not do that. Honestly, it wouldn't hurt at two and a half watts. You could key down all day long, it wouldn't hurt that radio. All right, so when we key this radio, we should be coming out on here. Let's turn the volumes down, so all we hear is, and there you got it. N5YZ testing, N5YZ testing. Now we can go the other way. N5YZ testing, N5YZ testing. There you go, it's that simple. Works like a charm. And you could do the same thing with UHF. Um, I could plug this into the UHF radio, put the load on there, put this on VHF, crossband that way. I could take the 7300, uh, plug the cable in there, and uh, go from VHF to HF and HF back. As a matter of fact, we can try that if you want. Turn this radio off. We'll simply take this, plug it in over here. So, we should be coming out over here now. Obviously, I don't have a radio, but we should be able to hear it come out here. N5YZ testing, N5YIZ testing. There you go. Break the squelch. That's it. Couldn't be any more simple than that. But, uh, yeah. Pretty good deal. Very easy to do, might come in handy. Uh, you know, it's not the greatest mod in the world. It may not be for everybody, but uh, for one, literally one cable to make all that happen, I think it's pretty cool. So that takes care of that. Appreciate you all watching. And you could potentially if you didn't want to have it, because it's hot, like I said, when you as soon as you plug in that cable, these two are, these two radios are hot. But you could put a uh, uh, like a double pole single throw switch in line with that, and just interrupt that uh, the send lines in both radios. So when the radio when the switch is in one position, it would you know break the send uh, send line, so it would turn the repeater off. And when it was you know in the off position, the lines would be connected and it will work but you know just plugging it in by hand i guess is fine but uh that's it i appreciate everybody watching and uh got a lot of projects coming up got a couple of really cool antenna projects coming up i think that are very unique i haven't seen them done but uh that's for the future appreciate everybody watching 73